Only idiots use lidar. When Musk made this statement a few years ago, could he have expected that China's lidar industry is currently in full swing, and Hesai's listing in the United States is an example of this? On January 17, Hesai, a Chinese lidar system supplier, filed for an initial public offering in the United States, aiming to raise $100 million. According to people familiar with the matter, Hesai has received strong interest from potential investors in its listing. For the lidar industry, the past 2022 was a year of critical turning point, and the shipment of Hesai also ushered in explosive growth in this year. According to the data in the prospectus, from 2017 to December 31, 2022, Hesai has shipped more than 103,000 Ladar units, of which 80,400 units will come from 2022. But also in this year, Ladar companies outside of China have fallen one after another. What is Ladar? What is it good for? Why do related companies in other countries go bankrupt one after another? and only China is still in mass production. Hi! Welcome to Auto Age. Before we started today's video, please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. Ok, let's get started. After the first generation Beetle came out in 1938, European and American consumers at that time knew that the curves of cars could be so smooth. Before that, the cars were all square iron boxes, not to mention the aerodynamic design. With the accumulation of technology, after entering the 21st century, almost all cars have also become streamlined roof designs. However, this beautiful and scientific streamlined design has been broken by the loading of Ladar in recent years. In 2005, when the Stanford team won the DARPA Grand Challenge with a vehicle equipped with five Ladars, developers of autonomous driving turned their attention to LiDAR, a not young technology product. The earliest laser radar can be traced back to 1963. American Frank McComa designed a laser device that can measure the distance to measure the distance of objects within 7 miles. Then the device was named Laser Radar, and later evolved into a tool specially used for speed measurement to check the speed of vehicles. The utility of LiDAR was first discovered by the public during the Apollo 15 mission in 1971, when astronauts used laser altimeters to map the lunar surface. At the same time, LiDAR has also been applied to the military field. Compared with traditional radar, LiDAR has the advantages of high precision, fast response, and stable imaging. It can obtain an accurate three-dimensional topographic map of an area in a short time and is not affected by day and night, season, climate, temperature, illumination changes, and various disturbances. Soon, it was being used on reconnaissance aircraft, helicopters, and surface ships for reconnaissance and obstacle avoidance missions. However, the mechanical structure used in traditional LIDAR is prone to decline in scanning accuracy due to vibration during high-speed movement, and its relatively large volume cannot meet the needs of miniaturization. In 1994, Laurel Vogt developed a solid-state imaging laser radar, which can distinguish objects of 15 cm from 1,000 m away. At the same time, the LiDAR is small in size and light in weight and can be installed on small equipment such as drones, and its price is much lower than traditional products. After that, it successfully won a large order from the military. The LiDAR used by the Stanford team that won the autonomous driving Grand Prix mentioned above is from SIG AG in Germany, and its subsidiary IBEO is the only company in the world that produces automotive-grade LiDAR. Although LiDAR technology was able to help vehicles realize autonomous driving technology in 2005, the actual loading of LiDAR still faces many problems. The first is cost. Although LiDAR has advantages such as small size and low price in the military field, these are all relative to expensive military weapons and equipment. For example, the development cost of the UAV 3D LIDAR developed by Lockheed Martin for the US military is as high as US$7.8 million. US dollars. The price of a Predator drone equipped with this system is as high as US$100 million. 
If you want to apply such expensive equipment to ordinary passenger cars, you must first solve the price problem. In addition to the price issue, the service life is also a headache. The mechanical structure used in mechanical lidar has a service life of only a few thousand hours, which is difficult to meet the demand of more than 10,000 hours for vehicles. At this time, mainstream manufacturers are focusing on hybrid solid-state lidar, so that they can take into account the issues of life and cost. In 2017, the Audi A8 was equipped with Valeo's hybrid solid-state lidar, becoming the first mass-produced car to achieve L3 autonomous driving, but it did not push Lidar and autonomous driving further. 2022 is known as the first year of Lidar. In this year, more than 10 cars equipped with Lidar were released, most of which are Chinese brands. In the face of the price that everyone cares about, the cost of China's Lidar has been reduced to less than US$2,000, and it also has better performance. For example, HES I-8128 Lidar can achieve ultra-high frequency detection of 1.53 million points per second. At the same time, the former industry leader Velodyne also reduced the price of its own Lidar to $4,000. At present, there are seven Lidar companies in the Chinese market that have entered the lead passenger car brand pre-installation mass production delivery cycle. The data shows that from January to November 2022, 98,400 passenger cars in the Chinese market, excluding imports and exports, are equipped with LiDAR as standard equipment. Beginning in 2023, as car companies such as BYD and Chang'an begin to enter the cycle of LiDAR onboard vehicles, they will continue to drive market growth. It is predicted that in 2023, the standard lidar delivery of passenger cars in China will sprint to a scale of 400,000 to 500,000 units. So, when China's lidar industry is booming, why do related foreign companies go bankrupt one after another? On December 21, 2022, Quanergy Systems, a developer of solid-state lidar sensors in Silicon Valley, filed for bankruptcy protection under Chapter 11 of the Bankruptcy Law less than a year after it merged with the acquisition company SPAC to go public. Quanergy had raised about $325 million before merging with the SPAC, but that funding wasn't enough to keep Quanergy alive. Lawrence Perkins, the company's chief restructuring officer, said in a statement that the company faced supply chain issues, difficult market conditions and litigation. Quanergy has made considerable efforts to respond to the ongoing financial challenges caused by volatile capital market conditions. Lawrence Perkins said. Notably, this is the latest in a series of SBACs to go public and go bankrupt in 2022. Fast Radius filed for bankruptcy in November 2022. Electric Last Mile Solutions and Enjoy Technology Incorporated declared bankruptcy in June 2022. Plus, Quanergy isn't the only Lidar developer struggling financially. In November 2022, German Lidar developer IBO Automotive Systems GmbH filed for bankruptcy after being unable to secure further growth financing. The above cases all show that the reason why these Lidar companies are unsustainable, in the final analysis, is, no money. The high investment in the Lidar industry is self-evident. One of the reasons why Musk believed that Lidar was impractical before was that Lidar was expensive and difficult to make technological breakthroughs. So, are you optimistic about the Lidar industry? Please put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas with other people. Do you want to learn about more auto stories? Please keep following our channel and like our videos. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.